Hello, this is Patty Jo, and we are on day two of the Daryl Brooks trial. Time to be making fun of some Daryl today. And, um, I don't know what the, how we are, how far we are. I think we're through the, um, testimony of Erica Patterson, at least the first one. That was painful, wasn't it? Oh my gosh. Okay. Excuse me. All right, so I hope everyone is doing well. Let's see where we are and see what we're going to hear today. Water. Mr. Brooks, please. Um, before the next witness comes in, if my ladies and gentlemen of the jury want to take a quick moment to stand. He's mad because he didn't get to keep torturing her. He's just mad about not having control. All right, thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right, uh, the state may call its next witness. All right, detective, please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. I think they said goof, but I don't, we'll find out in a minute. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. When you are seated, if you would please state your first and last. Before he does that, and before we get too far into this, I forgot to say, I did include the, um, uh, where you can donate to Waukesha, um, the permanent fund because uh, it's a memorial permanent fund. I don't know exactly how the <coughs> money is distributed. It doesn't go through me, but uh, I just thought it'd be nice if we could start thinking of, you know, people who may still be suffering and may still have some issues. Last names for the record and spell both. Detective Stephen Guth. Guth. S-T-E-B-E-N. G-U-T-H. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Detective, what do you do for a living? I'm a detective for the City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you worked for the police department? 20 years. How long as a detective? Um, seven years. Okay. Were you working as a detective on November 22nd of 2021? Yes, I was. On that date, did you meet with a person by the name of Erica Patterson? Yes, I did. What was the purpose of meeting with Ms. Patterson? I wanted to clarify her statement to me uh, regarding a domestic related incident that had occurred. And uh, as part of that clarification, did you get into a squad car with Ms. Patterson? I did. And what was the point of doing that? I wanted to um, ride in the car with her since she was unfamiliar with the geography of the city and so that she could point out to me specific directions on where she went with Mr. Brooks. Can we have exhibit one up on the screen for the jury please and for the witness? Well, permission to publish exhibit one. Granted, I'll go over there for a moment. <laughs> it's the rear laptop. Yep. Laptop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you said publish, right? Yes, please. All right. Confirm that that's what you want? It is. right corner of this exhibit. Okay, uh, where did you first, uh, or where did this journey with Miss Phillips, or Patterson, excuse me, Miss Patterson begin? 
Um, once I picked her up, we moved to Frame Park and we parked in the area that's um, close to the, where that star is, where it says Frame Park. In the top right corner? Correct. Okay. And where did you go from there? Um, from there, we traveled um, on Baxter. So the way that the frame, the frame park is here, can I touch the screen? Do we have the ability to let the witness touch and yep. mark? Um, just let us know at what points we'll capture it, and then we can also print it at another location and, if need be. <laughs> so we met generally in that area that's highlighted now in yellow. And we traveled in this direction on Baxter. Okay. And then what? Uh, as we continued down Baxter, we got to this street called Buckley, and then from Buckley, we made a right turn and ended up on Karina. Uh, let's yeah, go back up. Yeah, don't the screen until we can capture it. Let's capture there. Uh, and we probably need to. If you saw the little number counting the percentage, that means it's done capturing it. Can we clear that now? Yeah. And let's zoom out. I'll refer, we'll get that printed and we'll have that marked as 1A. Okay. Now, from where you left off there, after you made that right turn onto Buckley, can you, can you draw on the screen where you went next? Yeah, so again on Buckley, we did travel down Buckley to Karina. And then on Karina, we made a left turn, traveling along the river till we reached Barstow. And then from Barstow, we made a right turn, traveling up northwest Barstow, all the way to the Barstow Hill. Okay. So it's highlighted in green there, up the Barstow, Barstow Hill, and it's gonna come off the map, but all the way up to Bidwell. Okay, and did she indicate at what point you should turn around? <coughs> uh, at Bidwell and northwest Barstow. So that to me makes more sense what, what Erica Patterson was saying, that there was a hill and a hill and some other things. I don't know where the school is, but I'm getting a better she idea. where she went with Mr. Brooks after that. Well, she jumped out of the car at Bidwell. And North okay, West so the school must be up in that area. According to Ms. Patterson at that point. Beyond the hill. Um, at that point, she started making her way back the same path, uh, back to Frame Park. Um, again, because she's unfamiliar with the geography, she just used the same route that she just went. Okay. Did she at any point mention uh, a gas station on that route? Yes, she did. Do you see that gas station depicted on Exhibit 1? Yes, I do. Can you tell us where it is? Yes, it's the mobile gas station highlighted with a star, and I'll circle it in that area. Okay. Do we have a screen capture here? Yes. The screen capture has been done when we... Uh, get that color print brought to the courtroom that will be area. Do we have a screen capture here? Yes. The screen capture has been done when we uh, like get that color end, print I didn't do anything. brought Shockingly. to the courtroom that will be 1B. Okay. And uh, this map is from, you're familiar with Waukesha, right? Yes. This is an accurate map of Waukesha. Yes, it is. And the markings that you've put on the screen here, that's an accurate uh, representation of the route you took with Ms. Patterson on November 22nd? Yes, it is. We'll move exhibits 1A and 1B in evidence. Any objection? Yeah. The objection noted it's overruled. Exhibits 1A and 1B are received by the court. That's all I have for this witness. Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions for this witness? Go ahead. Detective. Sorry about that. Yeah, right. Good morning, uh, Detective Lee. Good morning. Uh, you've uh, been in law enforcement for over 20 years. Would that be fair to say? Correct. Uh, at any time during your over 20 years of service, um, have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Sustained. Oh, you went right for the soft set stuff. Can you state for the record if 
the point of his encroachment. Sustained. Have you ever seen the plaintiff? Sustained. Do you even know of the plaintiff? Sustained. Ever spoken to the plaintiff? Objection. On what grounds? Sustained. On what grounds? It's sustained. Next question. Can I ask what grounds you're on? Mr. Brooks, you have another question. I do. I, I was just trying to follow the rules that you said by saying that uh, an objection has to have a, a basis. So Unless just, it's self-evident to the court. It's sustained. Next question. On what ground you're on? Do you have another question? Otherwise, under 906.11, um, I will give the state an opportunity to ask any redirect. Yes, I do have more questions. Go ahead. Um, we're at any time that... Uh, Erica Patterson um, report any um, domestic incident to you? Yes. Do you remember um, uh, the dates that she reported or date? Yes. <laughs> At any time during that uh, report, did you find uh, her to be untruthful? No. Okay, so again, I'm going to go back to my experience with domestic violence. I have lots of time as a paramedic on the street. I have lots of time working with people who've um, been victim of it. I've had it uh, you know, in my personal life. And I can say with his 20 years experience, he's a very good witness in that he's answering the question posed. If it's a yes or no question, he's just saying yes or no. Whereas, um, not to say Corey Runkle was bad or go back on what I said about her because I thought she was a good witness, but as an inexperienced witness, you often feel like you have to explain the yes or no. You don't. Just simply answer the question posed and make the attorney paint the picture. It is not, you know, it is, it would be the prosecution's job to color in the, the voids if, if needed. And, and we'll see this come up in, in very extreme ways in this trial. But, for, for also for his 20 years experience, he took some time to think about it because again, a domestic violence victim isn't going to be dishonest. Now there's lies of commission. In other words, I say, I weigh what I say on my driver's license, which is clearly not the case. And then there's omission, um, which is, you know, somewhat some of the things that people do where they don't tell you the whole story at first and there's ethically there's still lies but sometimes when people are hurt they require that time to bring those things out the police will hide what they know in interviews because they don't want to color the admission if there's going to be one so you know as a parent you you may have known that your kids were in the peanut butter because they're covered in it but you want them to say it so you don't give away all of your information first that's technically omission but we're still trying to work on it so i i, I don't know i think there's some gray area there um, he, he definitely says she wasn't untruthful. She may have been slow to give him every detail. That's true. That doesn't make it dishonest. 
also self-preservation in those because again back then she didn't know if she was going to end up back in the situation again so giving away all of your okay so like how can i explain this if you are a person who's been injured and you are being questioned about the domestic injury, and this isn't the first time, but it may be the first time you've had help or assistance from police or help or assistance from medical um, personnel, then you would definitely be cautious because every other time you were back in the situation. And if you're back in the situation and you give it up too much, you're in danger. And we clearly see the danger she was in. Just one second. Um, I'm reading from the narrative of the your report and specifically the part where it says what I learned from Erica Patterson was that when I spoke to her on a previous evening with Detective Garrett she was not completely forthright with all of the information she had given would that be fair to say correct so would it also be fair to say that from the report that you wrote that you're acknowledging that there was some untruth in the report reported to you. No, that's incorrect. Mm -hmm. you, when I spoke to her on the previous evening with Detective Garrett, she was not completely forthright. You said what you learned was that she was not completely forthright. So is it fair to say that there was some untruth to the report? No. No. So why would that be in the report? For various reasons. The most common reason is that when domestic victims report crimes that happen to them, a lot of times they're very afraid of their abuser. And so they don't always give all details because if they do give all details about what happened to them, they feel like they might have something happen to them in a future date from that same abuser. Oh. I have somebody who agrees with me. So would it be and fair to say that you could have just... To be fair, I did not... I've seen a lot of this trial. I did not see this person's testimony during that time. Stated what you just said in your report? I did state that. Not in the report. Would it have... Would, is it fair to say That's that common knowledge. Obviously, you, you've been... In law enforcement for a very long time. Is that a question? Would it be fair to say? No, that it's a statement. It could have re questions. been reported in the way that you just stated, instead of stating in your report that there was untruthfulness. I didn't state untruthfulness in my report. If you further read in, into the report, I state what I just stated. Cherry picking. He's got girlier hands than I do. So would it be fair to say, no. though, that there, the information wasn't completely forthright? Yes. To the best of your knowledge, would it be fair to say that there um, was, in fact, only one incident? No. He's trying to make the 20th go away. 
as if that's relevant to anything. They dropped and it. And would you be basing that, to the best of your knowledge, would you be basing that answer, the last answer, on hearsay? No. No. So you, you would be basing your answer on um, eyewitness account? Grounds. It's not relevant because it happened on the 20th. It's I'm going to sustain the objection. That's part of question, the or you can rephrase it. But it's not even part of the case. Would it be fair? I don't know how I can rephrase that without asking it the same way, Your Honor. Help me, Mommy. Just give me a second. <laughs> so what are we, like, less than 10 minutes into this, and I'm already mm -hmm. making fun of him? First of all, all of his questions are, are stated in... Now, to, to be fair, to be fair, if I have to be, he's cross-examining so he can lead. But he is unable to fashion a question yet at this point in the trial. <laughs> he stinks at it. Um, and I'm not sure I would do any better because, again, not an attorney, but what I hear is your questions are either questions or statements. Okay. So if your question is a question, it's a question. If it's a statement, which his are, is it fair to say? Is it fair to, I almost felt like saying, you know, early on in the trial, we should have a drinking game. I can take a shot every time he said, fair to say, fair to say, because he just was unable to formulate a thought unless it was his he wanted his own thought he is in essence testifying and the fact that they have to sit there and let a lot of this go by so they don't look like bullies is almost sickening At any time uh, during your um, report or time spent with Ms. Patterson, um, did she state um, where she may have been on November 20th of 2021? Yes. Do you recall what that was? Where, what she said? I recall what she said, yes. To the best of your knowledge, do, do you believe that she was being truthful? Yes. And who's going to advise the jury that ultimately it's the jury's determination of credibility that matters? Um, and you heard me read an instruction yesterday. That's obviously the instruction you'll follow ultimately in the jury room. To the best of your knowledge, do you recall um, any injuries on the first reported incident? Yes. Do you recall what they were? Yes. And do you recall any injury on the reported incident from the day of the parade? Yes. Do you remember what they were? Yes. Can you state on the record what they were? On which day? The 20th. Her mouth was injured due to being slapped in the mouth. Do you... <coughs> As a paramedic, I will say the mouth is a very forgiving place other than the teeth being um, the weakest, not, not even the weakest really, but the most delicately injured portion. Um, it's fast to heal, very vascular, although it bleeds a lot. The blood is bringing inflammation and healing properties to the mouth that, so it happens very fast. Anybody who knows that if they bit their tongue or been hit by a ball or something like that. If, if it's in the mouth area, it hurts, it can bleed, and then it heals. 
and pretty soon you don't even know because it's not something you can easily bandage so mouth injury probably didn't show up probably didn't swell much can you recall for any reason why that would not be in the report it is thank you enough of your homework daryl daryl To the best of your knowledge. Knowledge. Can you can you say where in the report that would be? <laughs> I don't see it in the um, He asks for the guy's help. Report that I have here before me. You asking me which report states that she was injured in the mouth? Are you asking if it was reported to me that she was injured in the moment? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, why is there no injuries reported for that incident, alleged incident? It was reported to me that she was injured in the mouth by being slapped on the 20th. Are you aware that that was not testified to? No. Hearsay. What grounds would that be here, Mr. Right? Brooks? It's up for the jury to determine the truthfulness of anything that's said or testified to in court. Okay. He was not present for any other testimony, so it would not be proper for him to comment on that. Next question. Thank you. How would he know? He didn't. He would. Everybody's got a little bit of a different perspective. Would it be fair to say that the reported alleged incident? That looks looked like it skipped, didn't it? I didn't do that. Would it be fair to say that the reported alleged incident from the 20th is very, very vague in your uh, report? Would that be fair to say? Basically call And by vague, I mean confident. there's literally three sentences. I don't have the report in front of me if you're I have referring to vagueness. That's why I went back on the 22nd to interview her again to clarify information. Reasonable. There were many times so, my reports um, were vague. On the 22nd. And this is your report I'm reading from. It says, due to the influx of information, we were unable to make sense of all the information. Would that be fair to say? Correct. Okay, and I, I was going to say that there were there were many times that I would, many, too many times. I don't know if there were many, but too many times. Because in in my mind, one of the things I was very aware of was I think everybody deserves their name. Okay, whatever their situation is, whatever their shortcomings are, whatever their problems are, when they go to the hospital with me, they deserved a name. That is just a, a matter of respect for me. Uh, so there were times literally that I would leave scenes and not have a clue what this person's name was. Because even though that is very high on my list of important things, to communicate to the hospital that this person deserves the respect of being, having a name, having their name. Um, some things were more important. Um, I couldn't get them breathing. Uh, their injuries were too uh, severe. I had somebody with a motorcycle accident who um, I, I was piecing together as much as I could and he was so severely injured that I, I didn't, I literally scooped up his wallet and just took it with me. And that was it. I never looked at it. I never put it, I'm not sure I put it in my report. Because to me, the care was more important than, than that. And we could go back to that um, when we got to the trauma center, which is what we did. And because this became so extreme so early, 
a lot of these details may have gotten lost, um, which is probably why uh, a not severe injury on the 20th became a non-issue in the courts. So it would be also fair to say that that would basically state that there were some things you weren't sure about. Yes. You also say in your report that you had learned uh, had learned that there were two other individuals um, that may have been involved in the incident. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you remember the names of the two individuals? Yes. Would you state on the record what the names of the other two individuals were? Corey Runkle and the other individual's first name is Nick. I don't remember his last name. Corey. Did uh, Corey Runkle in any way report uh, anything about the incident to you? Not which incident? Hold on. Which incident are we talking about? Um, from November the 21st of 2021. Thank you. Can I get clarification? Are you able to answer? Not to me directly. Do you recall if you had learned of any information about uh, what Corey Runkle might have said to any other law enforcement? Yes. Do you recall what that was? Yes. Would you like to state on the record what that was that you may have learned? I learned that she was with Erica Patterson on the 21st, on November 21st, 2021, when she was, when Erica Patterson was being, was involved with a domestic incident. She responded to help her friend. Um, do you recall uh, uh, learning if Corey Runkle was with Erica Patterson on November 20th of 2021? I don't think Eric, I don't think Corey Runkle was with Erica Patterson on the 20th. You stated in the report that um, you were with um, Erica Patterson to kind of uh, basically you took her on a drive to pretty much um, retrace her steps. I, would that be fair to say? Yes. At any time, did any incident about November the 20th of 2021 come into your conversations with Erica Patterson? You're talking about during the drive. During the drive. I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor. No, I just want to make sure that the question's clear. Go okay. ahead. I believe we did talk about it, um, both incidents from the 20th and the 21st. Do you recall what was said? Yes. Do you recall putting that into your report? I recorded our conversation. I don't know if I put every detail of our whole recording in that report. Would it in be fact, I know I didn't. So not every detail from our recorded conversation is in that report. The report is a summary. But any reason to your knowledge, why would uh, details of the incident not be reported accurately. It's not inaccurate. Okay. Wow. This is such a, a hot topic um, in EMS and fire and fire is a little bit easier because they have more formulated uh, reports. But 
in in police and in EMS, it can muddy a, a little bit. And I think even in fire too, but again, they have, they have more structure to what they're doing than it's messier when you're dealing with a person in, in my experience anyway. Um, when I taught students to write reports, I never wanted to give them a script or verbiage. I wanted to give them a skeleton and then they would fill in pieces because as a human, there is no way you could give every detail of what happened. And, and a lot of my students did it so much better than I did at times, but just the, the idea of giving them the power to expand it with their own words really, really did help. And then having me read it and, and say, okay, well, this is what I read. Is that what you really meant? Taught them to avoid stupid questions like this. And I, I don't think he did anything wrong. I think, I think Daryl is just pointing out the, like Captain Obvious, the total obvious. It's totally irrelevant. To the best of your knowledge, why is that conversation that was supposedly had not in your report at all? Objection, Ms. Stacey Evans. Sustained. Thank you. Sorry, Your Honor, I got tons of paperwork. Just one second, Your Honor. stated that you interviewed Ms. Patterson on multiple days. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Um, both of those times that you interviewed Ms. Patterson, did the reporting ever deviate? Mr. Brooks, under 11. You need to clarify your question. Um, it's ambiguous. It's confusing. What I'm, what I'm getting at by that question is, did what Ms. Patterson said change from interview to interview? No. So at, so at any time, so at any time during your interview, did you learn less or learn more? I learned more in my second interview. So it would be fair to say that the information you learned changed. Would that be fair to say? Objection. Second interview. I'm overruled. He may answer. It did not change. I just gained, learned more information. More information about what alleged incident, the 20th, the 21st? Both, oh. honestly. I'm both, sorry. Both, honestly. So, would it be fair to say with, was it two interviews that you did or three? Two. So, with both interviews, you continue to learn things that you didn't know from the previous interview. You always do. Asked and answered. Sustained. Would it be fair to say that would it be fair to say that just one second, Your Honor.
to the best of your um, knowledge. Would it be fair to say? Did Erica Patterson give any report to any other law enforcement that you were aware of? Hearsay. No. But if it was yes, any further questions so would be hearsay. To the best of your knowledge, it would be fair to say you were the only detective that asked an answer. Ms. Patterson, asked an answer. Sustained. To the best of your knowledge, were you the only one that interviewed Ms. Patterson? Same objection. Sustained. At any time, did you learn anything about the alleged incidents? that Ms. Patterson claimed from any other law enforcement? Objection. Sustained. At any time were you, um, or at any time did you view the uh, video footage from White, White Rock School? Yes. Do you remember what you saw in those videos? Yes. You stayed on the record what you saw? Under my own sex 11, I'm going to advise the witness not to answer that video is in evidence. It's, it will speak for itself. Um, and his understanding of what's in there uh, is at, not at evidence. This point, uh, is not relevant. Yeah. Can you say what? Uh, was the date of the video that you saw? November 21st, 2021. Did you see any video from the other alleged incident from November 20th? I'll object. I don't see the relevance to anything that happened on the 20th. <coughs> Sustain. And his idea, if it's not recorded, it didn't happen, is... Do you know if there might have been any video from the alleged incident on November 20th? Again. Sustained. Grounds. It's not relevant. And yelling grounds doesn't help. My ask, how is it not relevant? The question was not as hard related to the 20th, sir. It's not relevant. I've given you leeway to ask questions at this point under 90611. Yes. Move on. Just so, just so I'm clear, you have never had any, any interaction with the plaintiff. Sustained. You've never seen the plaintiff. Oh, Daryl. Never spoken to the plaintiff. Objection. Sustained. Move on. Just so, just so I'm clear, you have never had any, any interaction with Why the plaintiff. Why is it flipping back like that? I don't think Sustained. I'm doing that. You've never seen the plaintiff. Objection. Sustained. Never spoken to the plaintiff. Objection. Sustained. Never seen. Uh, do you see the plaintiff in court today? Objection. Sustained. Do you know if there is a plaintiff in this matter? Yes. The state of Wisconsin. Objection. Sustained. Society as a whole. <coughs> Have you had any prior knowledge of the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Sustained. To, would it be fair to say that you know you do not know of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Sustained. On grounds. What grounds? Under 90611, I'm declaring the cross examination now closed. Do you have any redirect for this witness? Briefly, Your Honor. Thank you. Detective, when you reported that Erica Patterson had been uh, less than completely forthright with you, what did she leave out the first time you spoke with her? She left out the incident that happened to her on November 21st, 2021. The incident where she accused Mr. Brooks of punching her? Correct. Okay. You testified on cross-examination that in your general experience, victims of domestic violence uh, do not report 100% of the details all the time. Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Ground. He said general. He hasn't asked a question yet. Oh, grounds for the 
we can ask this question. This witness testified about his experience based on a question you asked. So the cross, the redirect is appropriate. I just ahead. say that every situation is different, Your Honor. Um, which we do know that. to testify, so no, he may not say that. The jury will strike that comment made by Mr. Brooks. You'll have an opportunity if you so choose to testify at a later point in time in this trial. The state may ask its question. Thank you. Did Erica Patterson provide to you a specific reason for her situation why she was not 100% forthright with you? Yes. What was that reason? She was extremely afraid of Mr. Brooks. Because he I bullies her. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, detective, you may step down. Any reason to keep this witness under subpoena from the state? Not from the state. Anything from Mr. Brooks? Yes. All right, I'll take that up later and reserve that until I can review that with the parties. All right, this would be an excellent <coughs> opportunity to take a mid-morning break. It's 1049, um, about 15 minutes. I'll rise for the jury. We are in recess. And, of course... He does not rise. So disrespectful. I'm going to stop here right uh, for this part. Find that I need to take breaks when I'm dealing with it's shenanigans. Oh God. And so we'll pick up. They're probably going to do some non-jury stuff, which should be interesting. Uh, I am going to be working on also another channel um, where I'm working on my hobby, which is my motorcycle. Um, if anyone's interested in that, it's Patty Joe Rides. And... Uh, be addressing some safety concerns first and maybe putting up little snippets of some of my rides. I'm just a beginner, so anybody who is interested in that, you know, take a look at it. It should be up in a couple of days. And thank you. Please uh, like, subscribe, share, whatever you feel uh, you want to. Thank you so much for joining me.